Hello, welcome pen friends. My name is Chris and for this week's video I decided to uh, do a progress on, on how Inco Rimo is going for me and, and talk about some of the things I've learned and and the the uh, you know the the process basically of it, of it all. It's just been really really nice for me and I hope for a lot of you or whoever is participating so I've covered, to start off here, I mean, don't panic, uh, I've covered all of the addresses of the people who sent me things. My my address is out there. You all know I'm doing Rimo and my name is on my YouTube channel. So I'm not, you know, I don't need anything to hide there. But uh, all of the addresses of the people who have sent me are hidden. And I'm only using first names in terms of where I have um, indicated I'm going to reply to them. So hopefully that'll be acceptable. I've actually heard from at least three uh, YouTube viewers have written to me and it was like really, really cool, really surprising what a small world it actually is. Um, so to start off, uh, well, I wanted to mention that I put all my, this is one of those boxes that's like a fake book and I've been putting them in there after I've uh, received them and, and written back and uh, logged in just so I don't lose them and I can get it at any moment and open it up and get back into it and I usually stick the ones that I'm going to reply back to in this little uh, Michael's uh, folder that I'm using to really organize it but there's a lot of names and addresses in there so I'm not going to open that um, but one of the things I wanted to talk about was uh, uh, the fact that uh, I just love how some people actually label the outside of their envelope and you know that it's an Inco Rimo letter. It's so cool. I've gotten two of those. Well, maybe more even. This one just had a tiny little sticker. Isn't that neat? You know, and I'm thinking, oh, I got to do something like that. I'd love to do something like that. Someone else actually did um, also uh, did a little neat stamper and put happy Inco Rimo. And it just, I don't know, you just see it in the mail and you're like, oh, it's a letter from, from the project, you know, from what I'm doing. So um, I had this all all uh, ready to type out, but I actually, I've received 10 letters, and three of those were replies, and then I have um, replied to eight letters, so I still have two that I need to reply to, and they're tagged here, so I'll remember. I've sent out 16 uh, original, you know, from me that I, that weren't replies, so, so when you add that up, um, uh, it's more, you know, than 16 that I've sent out. Okay, I'm a little funny today, but <laughs> three of those were international, so it'll take longer. If there will be a, a response, it'll take longer. So that was one of the first details that I I noticed. Well, I just love looking at stamps, you know. And um, one day I got a postcard for someone from someone right here in Texas. And, um, of course, her address is all covered, but she actually has, a, it looks like a stamper that stamps it this way, um, horizontal horizontally so it doesn't take up any of the card and anyway I love postcards and that was neat and the creativity is just just amazing you know with the washi tape and the the beautiful lettering and stuff and you know it's always different stamps and stuff and you know I just love it little little tiny stickers here and there and and uh so, so some of the people who have then replied to me, I've got longer on, on, on that because I wrote to them and they replied back. We have a complete cycle for now and I'm, I'm priority is a new letter each day and then, you know, getting two replies as I can. So like I said, I love this little sticker here, Inco Rimo 2018. I, I'm going to come up with something on my computer or either that or hand letter it on each one. And the creativity, the writing here is just astounding and can't show you uh, her address because, you know, but I thought, is that a stamper or is that actually writing? Oh, it's just gorgeous. So anyway, that's, um, you know, some of what uh, that was about there. Just just gorgeous. All, all kinds of different uh, beautiful letters. And uh, it's been an awful week for me, but this project has actually... Um, been a real lifesaver, you know, and, and it actually, it's, it's been a stinking month too, you know, if you get right down to it, trying to recover from the flu and then having my husband in the hospital. And then we had the loss of a pet this week. And I'm telling you, it's like February. Oh my goodness. But what if I hadn't had this? What if I hadn't had my fountain pens and, um, the, the projects that I like to do in terms of making videos and, keep it in contact with people. I think we need to really kind of respect these hobbies and these um, projects as something that 
can carry us through even when the rest of um, everything is, is gone crazy. So I tell you, um, during some of this, I, I haven't been able to write uh, full letters. I've written a couple of postcards, and that, but that was fun. And so there's some people that'll get a postcard from here from Corpus Christi, and I had to go get the postcard stamps. Um, they are 34 cents each, and they're real pretty. So I said, oh, that's appropriate for the area I live in. So you might consider that if you're doing a project like this and you're a little overwhelmed or things are kind of rotten, you know. <laughs> um, we can still kind of continue, or we could give ourselves a break, too, in, in a couple of days and not, you know, just pick up later. But um, let's see. Oh, I had one really neat one where, um, that, that well, I don't know which one it is right offhand, but... Uh, I wrote to this lady, and she wrote to me, and our letters crossed. So we have original letters from each other that we didn't, you know, it's, we didn't know we were going to write to each other. So it's going to be really cool to reply to that one. It's like, wow, okay, we chose each other off of the Inkorimo site. So that's the kind of things that can happen. And, um, and so I, I highly recommend making a comment on the this site. The um, It's Inkorimo dash 2018.org and I'll, I'll you know me I will link that for this video make a comment under join if if you want to get letters because I I feel I feel like that's what made this really successful so far they, they could find me and common interest you know I've got the crocheting um, the fountain pens uh, journaling bullet journaling cats you know um, South Texas a lot of little themes that people can find you under so um this probably will be a really short video this week, but I wanted to, to tell you that's pretty good. Ten letters received, you know, just out of the blue. Eight, uh, I've made eight replies to those, and I've sent out 16 original ones. I have my letter to write for today, um, and uh, it's just cool. You know, it's cool stats. Even this early, we're halfway through, and uh, it has been something that has gotten me through some real tough times already. Um not gonna lie it, it was painful and I actually wrote to one person about what had happened you know um, just a little bit not not overwhelming details or anything but I think all of us who have animals can can really relate so um, my crystals today are gonna reflect that because I needed to draw on on everything I could um, the first crystal that I chose this week to, to work with myself was given to me by, by a very good friend. I'm not going to mention her name because I don't want to embarrass her. She is a viewer here. But um, thank you. Um, this is the Zebra Jasper. And uh, it I couldn't find it in the actual um, crystal Bible. But I found it online at HealingCrystals.com. It allows you to be optimistic despite life's stresses. It's calming. It pulls in your scattered energies. It is very protective and it wards off negativity. So this has been a very helpful stone for this week, especially. Um, the the trauma with the animal started Monday and ended on Thursday. So it was very quick and very unexpected. So um, that's that one. And then this one here I was really familiar with already. I'd given one to one of my nieces when her grandmother was gravely ill. It's called Apache Tear. And uh, it's not a pretty stone in terms of, you know, it's black. It kind of looks like a, a lump of something. But it, it does, it's very interesting. And, and that I found the explanation for in the Pocket Book of Stones. This is another book that I really like. Um, my really good friend Karen had it. And I decided I needed it too because it has some of the stones that they're not anywhere else. Or they're not in my other book. So, I don't, hopefully you'll be able to also see this. Apache Tears. Um, Apache Tears are a variety of, of obsidian, and I'm not going to read all of it, okay, there's some technical stuff. Apache Tears can be used for grounding and for protection from negative energies. They link easily with one's emotional body and can be used to cleanse and heal old wounds or emotional baggage one may be carrying from the past, whether in this life or a previous one. Apache Tears facilitate processing and release of frozen emotional patterns, especially those held below one's level of awareness. Meditation with Apache Tears can open the floodgates of grief, allowing cleansing and release of feelings of woundedness or victimization. Apache Tears are excellent talismans of protection from all sorts of negative forces. They raise one's level of psychic attunement. 
So one can feel the approach of threatening persons, situations, or energies. I know not everyone is in, in that deeply into the metaphysical aspect of these rocks and stones. I, I am, but but even so, I, I like them for their, uh, their beauty and the interesting, you know, learning and working with them. You find out, you, you find out that they do, really do help if they're for you. Apache tears ally themselves with ally themselves with grounding and protective stones such as smoky quartz black tourmaline i have that on my desk but i just moved it um to just not be too many distracting things here i have the black tourmaline right near me all the time so anyway that's that and so i've been carrying these two stones here and uh so that's Gosh, it seems like there was a lot more I was going to say. You know, I could say things about paper and stickers and the fact that just receiving letters from all these people, I'm learning, oh, I could do that. Oh, that's neat. You know, um, I have stampers and I have stickers and washi tape. and But the creativity sparks more creativity. So, you know, I just think it's, I'm, I'm just mostly doing this as an encouragement that, gosh, I this is my first year. I don't know anything. I'm still... I'm having a struggle with paper. My small, my very small Tomo, Tomoe River paper is the only paper I have that's really good for fountain pens. So, so some people are getting, <laughs> I have to use my extra fine only on some of my letters. But anyway, uh, I think that it's there's value in just picking up these small ideas and encouragement. We're halfway, so if you're doing it, stick in there. It's so cool to open your mailbox and find a letter or postcard or, you know, surprise from someone that has written to you, taken their time to write to you. It's just awesome. So as I close this, I, I just want to uh, just show a little picture of my cat, you know, in his memory and uh, tell you uh, first that I did go through, um, I did go through a pet memorial center for his cremation here in Corpus Christi, and they were just awesome. Um, you know, we took him from the vet. We took him over, and then when they were all ready and had his remains, then they called me, and we went and picked him up, and uh, they gave me this little packet with uh, some wildflowers to plant, and I'm going to try to get this story out. It's <laughs> absolutely so incredible. It's nuts, but this morning, I, I opened my back door to look out there, now, my, my uh, cat was an outdoor cat only in the beginning, and we, you know, I finally got him in, and for 10 years, he's been, you know, in the bed, in the house, never gone back outside, I just didn't dare, I didn't want anything to happen to him, uh, so he was a rescue, uh, you know, pulled right out of the neighborhood, in other words, he just kept coming around, and with his mom, there's a long story about him, but this morning, I looked out there, and under my tree was a cat, a thin cat, but exact same markings and colorings as my Tony, and I'm going to show you what he looks like in a minute, um, and the cat, I, I stared at the cat, and I'd seen a couple strays that were orange, but usually they're like, they, they disappear before you can see them, they're, they're, they're feral cats, basically, or, or, you know, people just, there are kittens born out there, and they're, they're, they may be partially friendly, but you just never know, and usually you open a door, and they're gone, well, this cat ran right up to me, right, right up to the screen door and and looked so much like my Tony looked when he was a baby that I just I thought this is going to kill me and I, I started crying and I leaned down and I didn't open the door because I knew he'd run away and he rolled over and laid there you know and, and kind of like trying to get my attention probably hungry but the markings on his legs and paws were the same and I was like I'm freaking out here you know I just freaking it was like he was visiting and and uh, if you believe in those kinds of things, uh, the way I um, tend to do, it was really something. But um, I, I, I don't know what's going on. I don't know if there's a bunch of cats that are, he doesn't even look a year old. I don't know what's going on out there. Um, anyway, it's, it's spring here in South Texas, and this is his picture. So I just wanted to end, you know, in, in honor of him. Um, almost 13 years we had with him, and... So, um, but hobbies, friends, communicating with people, continuing with life, you know, can help you deal with these really hard things. So I wanted to pass that on. You know, I could let it break me or I could keep on going and do the best I can. So thank you for viewing. I'm, I'm not mentioning this, you know, for sympathy. Everybody's been so wonderful. Everybody I know. But uh, I just wanted to do it in, in the in honor of Tony. He's, uh, as you can see, 
part of the household. This was during the hurricane. <laughs> uh, they were all in the room, one room with us. And as things got settled down, I took portraits of them. It was just so interesting how he did that. You know, he sat like that. So have a great day and uh, love on your pets and your people. And enjoy writing letters. Enjoy your fountain pens. I've, um, I cleaned out my Conklin and, and uh, moved up my Lamy into the little pen rack here. I just love that. So I will see you next time. Hopefully I haven't been too uh, scattered for you today. But I thank you and I'll see you next time. Bye now.